seat empty in the Child Center. I'm here with Adrian Branch. First place in the West Coast Conference is on the line tonight. Portland at 6-1 in the conference. Gonzaga, of course, a perfect 7-0. For the Pilots, their only loss this season came back on January 10th when they lost at Gonzaga. They have not lost since. And these are two teams off to unconscious shooting starts tonight. Six of nine from the field to start for Portland and five of eight for Gonzaga. Again, it's the Thursday night showcase presented by T. Rowe Price. And this is one of those nights where the fire chief is sitting at midcourt because they tell you, Adrian, the child center seats 5,000. I bet the announced attendance is 6,000 tonight. And the fire chief gets a great seat about three rows deep at midcourt. Well, you know, Coach Reveno actually said this is an environment that Gonzaga will not be uncomfortable with because they're always playing the packed houses. But he was hoping for this kind of start with his guys being loose and just having fun, enjoying the moment. Nice look, holding to Micah Downs. He can't hit. A scramble for it. And a great play from his back. Demetri Goodson keeps it alive. On the road, like Gonzaga is, one thing you always want to win, especially on the road, is the hustle board. Little scraps like that. That was a good execution. Bounce can't hit. Sickman knocks it out of bounds, but it goes off of Ira Brown. Mark Few's team is the best in America overall at field goal percentage defense. The one thing, though, that Portland can do better than most other teams in America is shoot the three. Absolutely. So it's a clash of styles, styles because Gonzaga is so long at the perimeter. They have to move the ball and get open shots. The white jerseys want to shake the blue jerseys. Nick Rivio drives, and he's fouled. Downs thought he tied up Rivio. But Nick Ravio will go to the free throw line for Eric Reveno in his third year, an assistant for nine years at Stanford before coming to Portland. Each of the first two years he was in Portland, the Pilots won only nine games. But he thought they made a step from year one to year two, and obviously they made a huge step from year two now to year three. Well, he had a plan, and it was so interesting what he said to us. Four-year plan, the first year he just wanted to survive. Second year, more victories and improve. This is the third year. He thought this team could be a 15-win season. And then fourth year, they asked, he said, I want to win bigger. And they've already won 15. One more win, and they guarantee themselves an above 500 season. And he told us earlier today that his expectations for this year be above 500 and finish third or fourth in the league, and he'd be okay with that. So he basically admitted today that this is a team that has already far exceeded his expectations for this year. But he was also careful to say that he didn't want these guys to now be satisfied with Absolutely. what they've done. Absolutely. There you go. He didn't want to be a trick pony with this team. He wanted to establish something. And remember, there are no seniors. And if you can stay away from the injury bug to key players, good things can happen. Who would have ever thought Portland is playing Gonzaga for first place? Good defense right here. Gonzaga can't get anything. Let's make them go to the third, fourth, fifth option. Woodson drives the baseline, hits the underside of the rim, and it's right there on the putback for Ira Brown. Well, you'll take that. But for Portland, if they can continue to, to defend, because that was their goal, they didn't want to give anything easy, and on that possession, they didn't. Aishi Ito is fouled by Goodson. Will step aside off to a great start with first place hanging in the balance in the West Coast Conference here in Portland. All right, Ryan, you mentioned it, reaching the summit to say the least. Pat Summit gets career win number 1,000 tonight. That is unfathomable. What is not unfathomable in Husky Land is that both the men and the women for UConn are number one. Memphis, they've won 13 straight, and they extend their Conference USA win streak, best in the nation, to 50 in a row, which is amazing. They, in the middle of that long win streak, are going to put it on the line on Saturday afternoon at Gonzaga. Game day will be there, and that should be a really fun atmosphere here in Spokane when the Tigers go take on the Bulldogs. Well, interesting about Memphis, I have them dialed up as an Elite Eight team because of the experience of Robert Dozier, Anderson, and Taggart. And also, you have the young fellow Tyreek Evans that's starting to blend in, calming down, making the adjustment to the college game. A foul called on Austin Day, his first and the team's fifth. Rivio reverses. Guarded by Ira Brown. 
you got two guys in college that are, are tall. Greg Monroe for Georgetown and Austin Day that are basketball players. Now, if you were to ask, I'll go back in history, John Thompson, Big John, the Hall of Fame coach, he said, son, what are you looking for, a bodybuilder or a basketball player? <laughs> and between those two, they're, they're basketball players. At Bolden on the run, count the goal plus the foul. Strong drive in the middle. This is one advantage that you have bigger, stronger bodies right there. Bolden making plays like that is why he was player of the month in this conference. Stoll was called for the foul, and boy, that was a touch foul. I thought the foul would have been called on Rabio as he was able to get a little bit of a bump on Bolden, but boy, Stoll barely stuck his hand in there. Might be best though for Portland to keep Rabio out of foul trouble. It's a 5-0 Gonzaga run. One thing about Portland, they haven't had a fast break yet. Strong post up recognizes Sigma down low. He's a good addition. He comes off the bench as well. Gray from way outside. Hits a three. He's been the most impressive player for Gonzaga. Doesn't take away from the offense. In street vernacular, he doesn't throw off the run. <laughs> but he's a very good player, and he takes advantage of open shots. One thing about television, it, it doesn't show you how hard these guys are playing. They are playing hard just to get an open shot on both ends of the floor. Austin Day called for his second personal foul. Bob Schusen and Adrian Branch, part of the Thursday night showcase presented by T. Rowe Price here at the Child Center on Portland's campus in Oregon. Not a seat empty in what really feels like an old-fashioned gym with these overhangs behind each basket, a couple of paces off the floor in every direction, <laughs> and you're running into human beings. This is far from those NBA arenas that many colleges are building right now. This is a gym. Oh, absolutely. Sigma inside with the left hand. And it's a two-point game once again. Gonzaga's pressure has not bothered Portland. They've still been able to get the shots that they want. And when you're getting it at point-blank range, good things are happening for you. Austin Day gets a return. Tough shot from Cargo. Glanced off the top of the backboard on its way down. Well, he, he made it harder than he had to be. If he kept going in, he can elevate Campbell, can't block his shots. Niedermeyer for three. Banks it home. Did you hear anything? No, that one. <laughs> Quickly back the other way off the main basket, though. Day gets loose. He's tied up. And a foul is called on the floor <laughs> against Portland. If you, if you were boxing, they'd say that's a lucky punch. But you take it. You'll take it. Didn't call a bank shot, but you'll take it. Sigma called for his first foul. And he'll sit down. Knudsen comes back on. I guess you're going to be top ten in the nation shooting the three if you're knocking him down off the window. And Bolden. The old-fashioned way. Doesn't use the window, just knocks it down. Well, he and Gray have a similar game where they don't force the offense, they don't hunt shots, they just take...